nationalist. And I'm telling you what, Ilocos Norte is also going to manifest her destiny. And I told the host, I told them, there is going to become a wedding in your church. Once the wedding happens, that's a sign. After the wedding, everything that was prophesied to you, it is going to come to pass. They started to give each other a high five because unbeknownst to me, but known to them, there is a wedding that is going to happen to their church in six weeks. And the wedding is the sign that what was prophesied after the wedding, one after the other, it is going to be fulfilled. You see, when a prophet comes to your land, it is not for you to be entertained only on what is personal, what is personal to you when we're talking about prophecy, but you need to know what is the destiny of a city in the eyes of God. People, God has no reason to visit a city if there is no promise. And I tell you this, according to Ezekiel, if there is a disaster that is going to happen in the land, Philippines is not yet in a level that you can reverse disasters and especially once a very strong prophet is going to prophesy it over you, I'm telling you, you can only hope and pray it will not come to pass. Because I'm telling you once, if the prophet is walking a very high level of righteousness, not all your righteousness can reverse what was prophesied. God will honor that walk because that walk had suffered so much, sacrificed so much. They have suffered rejection, but they survive and continue with the Lord. And the Lord says, when there is already a disaster proclaimed on the land, look at this, Israel in the Middle East. This is ancient Israel that we have read in the book of Ezekiel. And God said, I am going to visit you with a hailstorm. Do you have an idea what is a hailstorm? A hailstorm is a frozen snow. It's an ice. Israel is in the middle of a desert. And the rain that will come to you is ice. Hello. Before something will come for a snow to become a hailstorm, you need to see snow first. So that the prophecy was so high, so deep, that a lot of it I not believe, I not believing for its fulfillment, but God fulfilled it in order to show the people that God is the one that executes it for the lands. I am telling you people, when God would release a city, when God would release a promise to a city, to a region or to a nation, sometimes the promise is way over your heads. And someone asked me in Singapore, if I receive a prophecy, which is too big, too grand, too high, too good to be true. Should I discard it? I said, if, if it sounds too big, too grand, too good to be true, it sounds like it's coming from God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Why would God promise you something that is already in front of you? You are so dumb if you do not know how to get what is already in front of you. You don't need a prophecy over that. Yeah. You just stretch your hand and get it. But prophecy, according to a foretelling word, say with me, foretelling word. Yeah. Something that is going to happen towards the future, prophecy that dictates towards the future, it has to sound too good to be true, either for good or for bad. If it is too good, it's a promise. If it is too bad, it's a disaster. What we read in Ezekiel is a bad prophecy, but nonetheless, it's a true prophecy. You don't want to receive a prophecy like Typhoon Yolanda, what the global people receive. It's a bad prophecy, but, say with me, but, it's a true prophecy. It got fulfilled. Sometimes when people hate you for what you prophesy, it doesn't mean what you said is not true. The truth is they just could not accept it because it is so true. So they reject it because they are afraid of the consequence of what is going to happen to them. You see this when a true prophetic voice is going to come to you. Sometimes it will come to you with a promise 
and sometimes it will come to you with a warning. When it is already a warning, it doesn't mean that God doesn't love you, or God ignores you, or God rejects you. When it is warning, it is the sign of the love of God to bring all of us back to our repentance so that we are not going to continue on sinning because you know what people, sometimes we have sinned so long that we do not know what is right from our left anymore. And in order for us to be reminded that this is your right and this is your left, a warning prophecy needs to be given in order to bring us back to the right path. Glory to God or what? So, when the wicked would arise to a nation, it's about sign for a nation. Because all the wicked laws will start to come into the lands. And they are going to proliferate into their evil. The next step of God is to raise up a prophet from among you in order to confront the voice of wickedness in the lands. And if there is no prophet to be found in the place, God is going to draw prophets from other places in order to speak over your lands. In the days of Amos, Amos is a prophet coming from Judah, okay? And God sent him to prophesy to Bethel. That's another city. And when he prophesied to Bethel, you know what they said? What are you doing here? Go back to Judah. We don't want any prophets coming from that city. The city belongs to us. What are these prophets doing to our city? There is a sense of ownership with what they're doing. But I tell you what, it is God who owns the land. Yes. All of us here on earth, we are passing away. We're here today, we'll be gone tomorrow. We're like grass. But God's voice will remain. Look at the Jewish people. The Jewish people were trying to be killed over and over and over again. Okay? During the time of Moses, there was a huge face out to kill all the young boys of the Hebrew people. But Moses was preserved by God. During the time of Esther, when Esther became a queen, and uh, you know, and during the time of sources, you know what had happened was there was another edict to annihilate all the Jewish people, but God preserved the Jewish people because Esther is already at the throne. During the time of Jesus, Herod created an edict to kill all the young boys because they now perceive that the Messiah is coming to town. So what had happened was the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary and Joseph and bring the baby Jesus to Egypt every time that the Lord is going to send something like that. There is always a warning and there is always a remnant generation that will preserve by God to become the next seed or the next generation that will multiply for the next righteous generation. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. The voices that God is raising up in this day and age is this. So many people are like wondering, but you know what? The, the, the prophets have ceased a long time ago, and the gift of prophecy doesn't only exist. This is the reason why people, when the prophecy was released in the global, that something like that would happen. I'm telling you what, the media is reporting it. Those who are not in the church, those who are not believers are reporting it, but the church is divided because according to the pulpit, prophets and prophecy do not exist. I am telling you what people, only less than 10,000 were dead. Now who is lying to you? Isn't it something that the media is reporting what is the truth? And the voices on the pulpit are not telling you the truth. And who rebuked those? And who rebuked the voices on the pulpit? That anyone in the church who are here today that declare to your pulpit, to their pulpits, that prophets do not exist. And therefore we don't believe that the prophecy in the global is going to pass. Any one of you coming from that church that did not rebuke the pulpit, I am telling you, woe to you. You are the voice that needs to rebuke that in order for the pulpit to wake up. I am telling you what, people, this disaster will never stop to come. According to Ezekiel, God hates the plasterer. If the pulpit keeps on telling you the good news, okay, and that will not expose what is the reason behind the disaster, they are plasterers. They are no longer the servant of God. At this 
point of time in the United States, if you keep on preaching motivational messages, you are already a false prophet. With the way things are going in the United States and the effect of the same-sex marriage to the world, if you keep on preaching motivational messages as if this social issue doesn't bother you, you are already a false. If you keep on telling people, even though you are not a prophet, you can be a teacher or a pastor standing in this pulpit, and if you are not bringing your people to a place of repentance after the global, after Yolanda, you are already a false. Don't you know that? The truth of the matter is you don't deserve a single person in your congregation. Because you are misleading everyone to a lie. You are plastering a wall. And according to the book of the word of God, the plasterer and the wall, they will collapse together. Because you are sitting under the preaching of a pulpit that doesn't want to rectify and, and declare that the prophecy was correct. You too will be guilty when the disaster would come. Not only will the plasterer be judged by God, even those that listen will be judged because you were given a chance to become a voice, but you choose to be quiet. I can feel the fire of God. I don't know about you. Do you feel the fire of God? I rabba God, yasikata. I love teaching people that are thinking. I love teaching people that knows, that evaluates the message of the preacher. Because you could not be a yes person. Yes sir. Yes boss. Everyone loves to be surrounded with yes people. I'm surrounded with people in the United States that loves to contradict me. And I'm telling you what, it makes me better, it makes me sharper. Because I do not be dumb and stupid. Because my, my decisions will be scrutinized by people. But if you are surrounded with people in your deaconship, in your leadership, that all that they need to do is yes, boss, yes sir, if I were you, in a church, I will be alarmed. Because if I am in mistake, no one will correct me, and all of us will fall into the ditch. It's the blind leading the blind. Don't you know that you can disagree, but not to the point of being disagreeable, because there are ways of speaking that you can disagree and still be surrounded with favor. Every time God would raise up a voice and will address the plastering that the plasterer is doing, the purpose of God is corrective. It is going to correct us that we are not going to swerve into the wrong path. God is bringing us back to the right path in order for us to learn the righteous ways of the Lord. Philippines was so deep. Philippines was so deep in an unrighteous leadership that they do not know what is righteous governance anymore. They do not know what is the right from the left. I have been to Ilocos Norte, specifically to Luang City. And that city or the province was the hometown of former President Marcos. And the Luang people are not aware on why is it that their city are not being visited by ministers. They don't realize it that even though they are not the Marcoses, but the curse of God had come upon their lands that even the ministers are not delivered in their hates, okay, to go to Lawang. Because every time you mention that name, what goes to their head, I'm telling you, evil come to place. You see these people, even though the entire city did not sin with you, but because you came from that place, and the mind of other people, the entire city is as guilty as you. And we broke that spirit of shame and humiliation among them. We realized that, you know what? This is not your fault. Are you going to destroy the righteous alongside with the wicked? Because God is already relentless in destroying that city. And God said, if even I can find 50, 45, 40, until it barking down to a lower number of five. Even if I find Five righteous person, I am not going to destroy that city. Why? I will honor the faith of the righteous, and I am going to preserve the righteous because of that. Praise the Lord.
God knows to honor that, but God needs to find a righteous people in the city in order to preserve the city. But the problem with Sodom and Gomorrah is this. There was no more righteous person in the land, and there was no more reason for God to, 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 to hold back his anger. God unleashes it. It's very interesting that after Yolanda had happened, so many unbelievers went to church. I have seen it because I'm, you know, I'm seeing a lot of photos on Facebook. The unbelievers went to church because they believe that it was the hand of God that produced that level of disaster. And then if you went to the wrong church, the church at the pulpit will say, it was not God who caused those things. So now, the unbeliever has a better concept than those who are standing at the pulpits. That's why even though God sent the Typhoon Yolanda as an opportunity for a nation, for a revival, even that the revival was not sustained because the knowledge of God is erroneous. There is a spirit of error. Philippines needs to change from the inside out. But I'm telling you what, it's unbelievable. Despite of the fact, despite of the little that Philippines have, Philippines is still growing and multiplying. Can you imagine what the nation will become if the nation is going to be brought back to a place of righteousness? The right way of knowing God. All of a sudden, countries like Spain wants the Jewish people. Even Germany you know, Hitler came from Germany and killed a lot of people during the Holocaust. Even Germany wants the Jewish people now. <laughs> what is going on to the nations of the world? Germany right now is collapsing in its economy. Last year when I was in Brazil, I said, God is going to raise up Brazil. Okay? And one of the nations that will go down is Germany. It happened. Right now, Germany is living into this plaster. They're trying to remedy the collapse of their nation. But eventually, Germany is going to collapse in order to raise up Brazil while revival is going on. 
in a country like United States, where United States have fallen from a position of strength. I told you yesterday during the first part of this message that the commandment of God is the standard of God. That you need to reach the standard of God. You can follow the standard of God, but it doesn't mean you have reached the standard of God. If you haven't reached the standard of God, meaning you don't operate your life or your nation from a position of strength, because following the standard of God is a position of strength. United States followed the commandment of God that made it that made the nation great. But when Obama entered the picture and legalizes the same-sex marriage, he eventually became a transgressor and he had fallen away from the commandments and now America had shifted from its position. From a position of strength, it had shifted to a position of mercy. This is now the opportunity of weaker nations to arise. Okay? Nations like Philippines, nations like India, nations like China, even righteous nations like Singapore, but are still small and still very young as a nation. This is now the opportunity of other weaker nations to arise because the United States have given up the position of strength in order to shift to a position of mercy. In that position, God is waiting, who is the nation of the world that will rise up and correct the United States. You know what is the nation that is so vocal? Russia. If you think about it, Russia is a pagan nation. During the time of Reagan, Reagan rebuked Russia as a godless nation. When Barack Obama legalizes the same-sex marriage, Putin said this, Putin, the president of Russia, he said this on TV, now who is godless? It's no longer Russia, but it is America. Now you see this, Russia remembered what Reagan said, but Reagan, a righteous president, is already dead. He is like David, he is a king of the land president, he is also a prophet, he speaks for the heart of God. But you see, Obama is not like that. His values are so different. People, when your values are twisted, when you become a mayor, a governor, a congressman, or a senator, or a president, your twisted values will follow you in that position. And once you are there, you will also legalize your, your twisted values. Now you are trying to make evil as good. You see people, if I am dumb before the election, during the election, I am still dumb. And if I am voted, by the dumb voters, I will still be dumb, even though I am already in the office. Being promoted or elected to become a congressman or senator will not remove my dumbness if I'm already dumb before that. Yeah. Praise God. I don't know why you love messages like this. What's it? It's the truth. It's a weak people you are being with. I believe sometimes that the churches in the Philippines have this sadistic uh, love. They have this sadistic love for messages that whip, whips them. I don't understand that. You know why? There is so much that needs to be corrected. But according to Proverbs, we don't deprive you of the rods. Because if you love your children, you will give them the rods in order to make them learn the ways of righteousness. The Bible said, you, the, the Bible said, you correct, you correct the man of understanding, he will thank you, and he will increase in understanding. But if you will correct the foolish person, he will hate you. Why? He loves his foolishness. Putin was now, Putin, Putin, the godless Putin, is now on TV trying to correct America. And the Americans were like, what is he doing? Who will listen to you? But you know what it is? I am looking forward for righteous Philippines to step up. I am looking forward for righteous Philippines to step up. You know why? Philippines is so righteous in so many ways, you don't have a divorce in this country. 
when the rest of the nations of the world have abandoned divorces and now they are on their way to their next level down, not next level up, but next level down, their next level down is now same-sex marriage. Philippines have not even crossed the road of divorce. And then Philippines have not embraced the abortion law. When all of the nations of the world have their abortion, Philippines is still righteous. But Philippines does not know that. Philippines is not stepping up and, and will say to, to um, Boxley in America, I rebuke you, America. Why? You are moving away from your righteous foundation. And Philippines has the backbone to correct that. Because there is no divorce in this nation, there is no abortion law in this nation, and there is no same-sex marriage in this nation. But if you do not know what you have, you will not know what to say. Yes. Look at Russia. When Putin would go to, to the meeting of G10, because it is one of the G10, Putin will always talk about gas. Because that all, that's all that he knew about his nation. That his nation is rich in natural gas. You need to understand that Putin could not talk about values. They are godless. Putin could not talk about revival. They don't have it. Putin could not talk about Christianity. They don't have it. They don't have it. So the only thing that he knew is talk about gas. I told you, it is a gas station pretending to be a nation. Philippines doesn't know it that the mere fact that there is no divorce law in the land is already a good conversational point during the meeting in the United Nations. But the government of the land doesn't know it that your strength is can be used as a foreign policy. If you are the foreign minister of this nation, you are going to present to the nation of the world that our nation has no divorce. Therefore, it is one of the best nations in the world to live peacefully and to keep your marriage. And I'm telling you what, it is going to invite tourism. And tourism is going to invite more businesses to the business and more money coming into the nation. And more businesses will sprout and many people will be employed so that your people will not become a domestic helper in Malaysia, Hong Kong, China, and Taiwan. But people does not understand that because they don't understand it. They are striving to survive and grow a nation from the backbone of the revenues of the domestic helpers. When you are going to say today that there is no abortion in the Philippines and that Philippines promotes life, I am telling you, so many Western families, they are going to migrate to the Philippines. Why? These are the people that will love and value the family. But when we do not know it, we don't include them as part of our foreign policy. Okay? When Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu would stand before the United Nations, what does he do? He would educate the United Nations about how their nation started, about how God showed up to Abraham, or how God rescued Esther. It is a Bible study. But according to Netanyahu, that is their foreign policy. The foreign policy of God for, every, for any nation is this. You bless Israel, and I will bless you. So you want your nation to be blessed? Do you understand why foreign leaders have a summit meeting? There is an Asia Pacific Economic Summit meeting in Iloilo in a few months. Do you understand why they're doing that? They are trying to promote each nation in order to attract business, in order to help each other's economy. But the foreign policy of Israel is very simple. If you bless us, God will bless you. Amen. So even though you are not a Harvard graduate, I can understand it. Even though I am a farmer, even though I'm a tricycle driver, I can't understand that. God made it so simple, but sin made it so complicated. In order for God to bless Philippines as a nation, the number one goal of the Philippines is this, to bless Israel. Can I tell you something, people? Every time Israel is having a crisis, and a fight against any nation, 
It can be with the Palestinian people, or any Muslim religion, or it can be ISIS, or it can be the jihadists, or it can be the Muslim Brotherhoods, the President of the Philippines, or if you are the governor, or if you are the congressman, your next step, you must be in front of a TV like this, and you will declare that the stand of our city, the stand of our province, or the stand of our district is for Israel, and we are going to support Israel, because you could never come against the chosen of God and expect God to bless your city. But until now, Philippines are not doing it because they do not know it that God has a foreign policy for a nation in order for God to bless a nation. Ah. Glory to God. We don't know that. We don't step out in the open and declare that. When, the, when America stepped up and said, oh, you know what, we are legalizing same-sex marriage. And then during their summit with the other nations, and then Obama will say, did you receive a foreign aid from the United States? Therefore, consider also to have the same-sex marriage in your country. You can tell Obama right on his face and say this, you know what, Philippines is not America. Thank you for the financial aid, but we're not going to receive that. And I'm telling you what, America loves confrontation. They love debates. And unlike the Filipinos, after the debate, they kill each other. In America, they can debate forever, and after that, they will shake hands and run in the same party. You can't tell them a front of what you say. And after at the end of the day, they still are okay with each other, they're friends and they will support each other. It's a different mindset. So you can even tell America, America, we are not supporting the same-sex marriage. If I am the president of the Philippines, in order to become a socially relevant person, after America declared that, and there is a delirium all over the world concerning the same sex, the president or the governor of any city or province needs to step up in the open and say, hey, look, even the world is like this, like, like that. We are not going to become like that. We are a conservative nation, and we honor the marriage between man and a woman, and even though America, the superpower of the world, is going to a different direction, we are not going to follow that. We will remain to our conservative values. Are you sitting against God when you say that? No. But why don't we say this? Because we do not know.
You need to take an active stance and build it right away. Because if you ignore it and you allow to allow time to play it out in what you call procrastination, eventually what is going to happen is this. If you give the enemy an edge, he will take a boy. So while everything is sprouting, you need to cut it off from the roots. Bring your axe to the root of the tree, and before the tree will sprout, destroy it so that there is no opportunity for any unrighteousness to arise. Actually, Philippines, the position of America had abandoned because of the same-sex marriage is the opportunity of the Philippines and other nations to arise. But Philippines, you need to discern and identify your door of opportunity. You could no longer become passive. You could no longer allow the concerns of poverty to limit you and make you mute because sometimes the mindset is this. So what? We don't want to become a voice. It's not rise. Because the mindset of poverty dictates your walk. The people, are you forgetting in Matthew 6, 33, that if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and sometimes the expression of righteousness is to become a prophetic voice in an hour where there is so much evil flourishing, when God is calling you to become a voice, you don't keep quiet and you don't allow your fear to drown your voice. You need to speak out and arise and your voice needs to be heard even though there are only five people listening to you. You need to really become prophetic. You speak to the five and then you speak to the spirit realm. Lord God, bring my voice to every corner. Let the wind from the north, the east, the west and the south carry the prophetic voice that this nation is for righteousness. You see people, Philippines is ready for a leader in the land that is a prophetic voice that is going to speak this way, that even though we could not change people on a personal, individual level, you can address the spirit realm the way Moses did in Deuteronomy 32, when Moses said, heaven and earth, you listen to me, I am going to speak. Moses was talking to the cosmos, heaven and earth was trembling, why? The voice of the prophet is talking, Reagan, Reagan during his time, speak in front of the Berlin Wall and said, let this wall come down, the voice of the king and prophet, that wall collapsed in 1986. You know what these people, we haven't learned how to talk in the spirit realm, all of our conversation is in the natural, because we don't have authority in the spirit, we don't have power in the natural. Because we are forgetting that we are spirit beings. We are not just a physical being, but we have our spirit inside of us. And every time you address the spirit realm, they understand that you are the boss. Even the angels are under us. Angels are not over us. We were created by God to form into his image. And when you speak, the spirit realm are being taught. The person, the, the human beings that were created just below God is now speaking into the spirit realm. Their authority is being known to them. And Philippines, this is the level of authority that you need to walk in these last days in order for this nation to arise. Amen. Glory to God. Oh my Lord. Get that in your spirit. And you know what it is, Philippines? You could not allow the message of God to go in one ear and then you forget it the next day. You allow the word of God to ferment in your spirit in the same manner when you eat a pizza. The pizza is fermenting inside of you. You allow the word of God to come inside of you and allow it to be fermented, process it, and to speak it out. I'm looking forward to the day that when the talk of the Philippines is also their walk. Amen. Right now, it's all talk, little walk. And those who walk does not talk. So we have problems on both ends. Those that needs to be a prophetic voice is quiet. And those prophetic voices, they are not walking. So we are both paralyzed and mute 
it's not a good thing. I want to see the day that your talk is your walk and you are walking what you are talking. Yeah. You need to be the mouth and the feet of the Lord in this evil day. Glory to God. Yeah. You rise up, praise the Lord. Hallelujah.